New year, new opportunities. What's up guys? And first of all, happy new year to everyone. I have got some great news for you guys. We are finally coming out of the bear market this year. Okay, okay. I know that might be a stretch for some of you, but stay with me because in today's video, we're talking about my Bitcoin and overall cryptocurrency outlook for 2023. And if you're like me and you're tired of your portfolio looking like it's been hit by a truck, trust me, I feel you. Then you will want to stick around for this one. We'll be breaking down past historical trends. If there's any more potential bankruptcies left for 2023 and the macroeconomic economic events that we might see this year in the market. By the end of this video, you'll have a much better idea of what to expect from the markets in 2023. And as a special New Year's treat, I've got a little something extra for you guys at the end of this video. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee or maybe a stronger beverage, and let's get right into this video. What's up guys, I am Jay and welcome back to Bitcoin Daily. Remember this content is for educational purposes only and is not financial advice. Always do your own research before risking any of your own money. And as a disclaimer, I am invested in Bitcoin since 2016. So if you guys are new here, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. So 2022 ended up being the second worst year for Bitcoin in its short history. We ended the year down 64.24%, the only time that we had a worse year then what we had in 2022 was, of course, in 2018 when we ended the year down 73.39%. So although it probably looked and felt like the worst year in crypto ever because of so much that was going on and because of the sentiment in the market and because it was so recently, it actually wasn't the worst year that we've had. And if we compare it to previous bull markets to bear markets, right? All time highs to the bottom of the bear market, assuming that the bottom of the Bitcoin price is in already, which I do personally believe that it probably is in, you'll see that we dropped to the third worst bear market because the first First actual bear market was the worst one for us um, when Bitcoin went down 86.9%. Then the 2018 bear market, we dropped from the, its all time high down to the bottom. It was 84.12%. And then currently in this bear market, we've dropped from our all time high to the current bottom, which is about 15,479. That puts us down about 77.57%. So we're pretty much in line with the other two bear markets. Let's say that we did drop lower to let's say 84%, just to kind of get an idea of where that would be. That puts us around that 10 to $11,000 mark. And at let's say 86%, that would again, keep us around that nine to $10,000 mark. So again, we're in line with all the other bear markets but we're actually not as bad as all the other bear markets, but we're right there, right? And that's also why I, I do think that the bottom is probably in, and if it isn't, I don't see, and I know a lot of people saying that Bitcoin's price could potentially go below $10,000. I can't see that happening because we would have to have pretty much the worst bear market, the worst pullback of all time in order to get there, which would be a 86 to 87% uh, pull down, right? And that would still put us between nine to $10,000 at that point. And for that to happen, we basically need more bankruptcies and you know things of that nature in order to tank the price so much further down. And we'll come back to that. We're going to be talking about bankruptcies, but first let's clear the chart here and let's take a look just at the yearly chart, right? So each candle here, represents 12 months. And what I always like to do is look for patterns. So we're not going to count this red candle here. This was 2011. The market was still just getting started, right? We're not even gonna count. We're not gonna count any of these three years here. We're gonna start here in 2014. And what you're going to notice is that we have a red year, right? A down year. Then we have one, two, three green candles. And then boom, another down year, another red year. Then one, two, three green candles. And, and last year, 2022, another red year. So if this same exact pattern that we've had for the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years, if it goes on to 10 years of the same pattern, then what this pattern is going to be showing us 
is that we're gonna have a green year. And when I say green year, I don't mean that Bitcoin's going to explode like we've seen here, right? Over a thousand percent, over 5,000%. This year here, it was pretty much just Bitcoin consolidating, right? It's a consolidation period there. So you'll see that it ended the year up 34%, but you'll also notice that it had a wick to the bottom. And at one point, Bitcoin was down 52% throughout that year, right? And then as, as it continued, the next year did even better, 124%. And then boom, 2017, over a thousand, over 1300% return in that year. Of course, that was a raging bull market, right? And then we ran right into this next bear market in 2018. I'm sure a lot of people remember, but then look at 2019, we were green 94%, 2020 up 300%, 2021 up 59%. And then of course, last year down 64%. So this pattern here kind of points to a pretty boring um, consolidation filled 2023, right? This is what I call the year to basically load up your bags. And then it's the next two years, which Bitcoin's price really begins to move. And the crazy thing about this pattern, and then if we move forward and look into this year and next year, it falls in line with a lot of macroeconomic events. Not only does it fall in line with a macroeconomic event, but it falls in line with the Bitcoin halving. You can see right now on the clock, there's one year and 78 days left before the Bitcoin halving, the next one. And this of course has always played a huge role in the price of Bitcoin. Now, we're going to talk more about the macroeconomic events and the Bitcoin halving cycle and how this has affected this exact pattern uh, that we're looking at here. But first, I want to take a few steps back. I don't want to go full bullish mode yet, right? And I want to talk about bankruptcies. So as you guys know, last year, it all basically started with Terraform Labs, aka Terra Luna. They had they created a cryptocurrency algorithmically pegged to the US dollar. But in May, it basically lost its peg from the US dollar. And not only did it plummet Luna, but it plummeted the entire cryptocurrency industry. And this, of course, set off a chain reaction where we saw lenders like Voyage Digital and Celsius Network fall and file for bankruptcy. And we also saw hedge fund Three Arrows Capital also fall. Then, of course, the most recent one is FTX, where they basically lost billions of dollars of their customer funds because they were using it to do other stuff with it. Right. And then that has caused other companies. Now, the domino effects just continues on and it has affected companies like BlockFi, which has had to file for bankruptcy. And then now the question becomes, OK, well, are all those bad actors, all those companies, is it over or are there any more? big companies that could continue to act as a catalyst for the crypto market to fall further. And that, of course, brings us to this current developing story here, where Genesis is owed $1.675 billion and 900 million of those dollars basically belong to Gemini. And Genesis is owned by, if you don't know who Genesis is, by DCG, Digital Currency Group. If you don't know who that is, I'm sure you guys have heard of Grayscale Investments or GBTC. This is all owned by the same company, basically the same person, right? Barry Silver. And basically DCG borrowed or owes $1.675 billion to Genesis, which they also own, right? Then we recently had an open letter from uh, Cameron Winklevoss, who is who owns uh, Gemini. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the Winklevoss twins, the originators of Facebook. And they kind of had a Twitter battle here where uh, Cameron wrote an open letter asking um, Barry Silbert basically to pay them their $900 million. Barry Silbert then kind of tweeted back and then uh, they just kind of went back and forth, right? This all ended with Genesis telling clients that it needs more time on financial woes before it can start repaying or letting um, customers and clients take out, withdraw uh, their funds. So the issue is that this is how the, all these other companies began, right? They paused all withdrawals for their clients and eventually files for bankruptcy. I'm afraid that this could happen here again. And if this did happen, it's going to affect so many companies. Because if we look up digital currency group, other than Genesis, it also has Grayscale Investments, 
and HQ Investments. I'm not sure what that one is, but they have estimated around $50 billion in assets under management. So not only will this affect Genesis and Grayscale Investments, DCG, right? One of the biggest crypto companies that there is right now, but it will also affect Gemini. And Gemini is another huge crypto company that has around $30 billion in assets under management as well. So basically Genesis owes Gemini a billion dollars. Um, and if there's a bankruptcy, they're going to lose those billion dollars, which are customer funds. This is the only way that I see Bitcoin setting a new bottom if they were to default on their loans or they were to file for bankruptcy or anything like that, that would be a major catalyst because that could also affect Gemini. Um, and if they were to file for bankruptcy or anything like that, yeah, then we, we would definitely be seeing a new uh, bottom for crypto and potentially seeing uh, Bitcoin go below $10,000 at that point because who knows what else uh, that would affect. So you can see why this is a huge storyline in 2023, and it is something that we most definitely have to keep an eye on. So now let's dive into the 2023 macroeconomic events that we need to keep our eyes on. There's basically four main things that we're watching this year. War, COVID, inflation, and interest rates. As we saw last year, war is not good for anyone. It's not good for the countries going to war. It's not good for the people that live in those countries or in the surrounding countries. It's not good for that country's economy. And it's not good for the overall world economy either. Simply put, war negatively affects the entire world. The war in Ukraine definitely impacted the overall world economy and sent prices way down for basically everything. Um, and there was just so much more going on, which is part of the reason that we're that the world is basically in this recession currently, right? And this comes on the back of COVID where we just had a global pandemic. People were sick, people died, people were out of work, people had no money, so the governments were just printing more and more money, which of course affected the world and the inflation, right? Now, I know many of us have probably forgotten that COVID exists still, but rumor has it that it's still currently raging in China right now. And the thing is that the government in China has stopped releasing COVID case numbers. So we don't know how bad it is right now out there. And then finally, the last two things, of course, is uh, inflation. And th this was directly impacted by the global pandemic. Governments began printing a bunch of money, trying to stimulate the economy. And of course, inflation started to go up. I know in the US, we hit a peak of around 9%, 9 point something. But in other parts of the world, it is way, way worse. And then um, what the US is currently doing and what they were doing last year in 2022 to battle and, and fight against inflation was, of course, raising interest rates. Now, there is some good news with inflation. Um, it has been steadily and consistently going down over the last few months. We've dropped from that nine point something down to around 7.1% last month was uh, reported. We will be awaiting the report, which is supposed to come out this month, I believe on the 10th. So by the time you guys see this video, that report will probably be out already. So it's actually coming out on the 12th. So next Thursday, as you can see, the previous report was at 7.1% and the forecast for this next report is 6.9%. So they're expecting another 0.2% drop off there. So inflation directly affects interest rates and what the Fed does. The Fed's goal is to get inflation rates down to 2% by the end of 2023. In order to do that, they're continuing to raise interest rates. But the good news is that last month, they raised only a half percent instead of the 0.75% that they did the, the time before that. So that is good news. There is a slowdown in the rate. There is a slowdown in the rate hikes, but I do fully expect them to continue these rate hikes probably at least a few more times to start off this year. That's basically what they've been saying, but I'm also expecting throughout the year for them to eventually stop raising them and maybe towards the end of the year if inflation is getting close to its goal they can start decreasing the interest rates and that's going to fall in line with basically the next bull market right so let's just say that by the end of the year stopped altogether 
raising interest rates. Inflation is down to three, cl getting close to that 2%, and they start talking about decreasing interest rates in the beginning of 2024 or maybe even as early as the end of 2023. Now we will start to see the market start heading back up, especially the riskier assets, which is what cryptocurrency is considered. Then remember in 2024, we have the Bitcoin halving event happen. The date set right now is March 25th, 2024. This date is going to be changing all the time. Um, it's not an exact date. But let's just say March of 2024. Now let's take a look of what Bitcoin's price has done on the year of the Bitcoin halving and the year after it. And let's even take a look of the year before the Bitcoin halving, right? So the first Bitcoin halving event was in 2012. This was the first time ever. In 2012, you can see we had a green year, 189%, but the next year, so post halving, is when we really saw Bitcoin's price move. Then we had the bear market in 2014, 15, and we had our next halving in 2016. Now, if you notice, pre-halving, the year before the halving, the price started to pick up a little bit. The year of the halving, the price went up 124%. And again, the year after the halving, price shot up over 1,300%. So after the halving, 1,300%. Post-halving again, over 5,400%. Year of the halving, green. Year of the halving, green. And pre-halving, before the halving event happened, it was green that year as well. Now fast forward to the next halving, 2020. You can see 2020 over 300%, the year after the halving up 59%, pre-halving also green up 94%. So this is all starting to show a pattern, right? You can see historically that pre-halving, the year of the halving and post-halving are usually the three green years that we have in a row. Then that year in the middle is always a red one. And then again, pre-halving, halving, post-halving, post red. Pre-halving, so what I'm thinking, pre-halving, it's going to be like probably like these two years here where it's not going to be anything crazy. A lot of consolidation will end up in the green. Then the year of the halving 2024, not only because of the Bitcoin halving, because of uh, inflation going down, uh, decreasing interest rates. That's all kind of telling us that 2024 and 2025 is going to be the next bull run for us. So this year is just basically the, the price bottoming out. Then the next two years bull run. Then we're gonna have 2026, a red candle. And this is of course, if it sticks to the same similar pattern that we've been seeing these last uh, 10 years. So when trying to figure out what, where I think Bitcoin's price is gonna go by the end of this year, trying to be conservative, I would give a number of around between 28 to $30,000 probably. And I would expect that to happen probably closer to the end of the year not anytime soon. So it would be maybe like October, November, December type of thing where we kind of got through 20, 25,000 and got to 2830 and just kind of was there to start off uh, 2024. Not saying that it won't go higher. Bitcoin, you can't predict Bitcoin, right? But I'm trying to give with everything, all the information that we have right now on the 6th of January, 2023, that is my best conservative prediction right now. I do think we have a green year. Of course, this could all change with uh, DCG if they were, were to go bankrupt, if Genesis, if Gemini, if other companies were to go bankrupt. This could all change. But as of right now, the state of it right now, that's kind of where I'm thinking uh, we could end up by the end of this year going into 2024 to then really see a rally up in 24 and 2025 to new all-time highs, $100,000 and possibly beyond that at that point. So that means that 2023 is a year to accumulate, load up your bags, build up your long-term positions in projects that you really believe in using dollar cost averaging. I've done a few videos on what I'm currently accumulating and I will be doing more of these videos um, in this month because this does change and get updated depending on what happens. Every time something big happens, right? Um, all these things can change. But I personally am consistently putting money into the market, investing every single week on red days. I know it could feel weird and unnatural to go against the grain with the current sentiment in the air and in the markets right now. But I'm telling you guys, this is a time to build your long-term wealth 
you buy when there's fear and blood in the market you don't buy when bitcoin is at all-time highs this is how i've built my portfolio over the years by buying the fear and selling the greed i hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you have make sure to drop a like drop a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as i promised you guys in the beginning of the video i had a special treat for you guys for this new year so i'm going to be giving 25 percent off for lifetime in my discord group so all you got to do is go right down here where it says join our vip exclusive mentorship group click that link once you get to this page right on the bottom here where it says have a coupon make sure to hit that and you're going to enter bitcoin 2023 and hit apply to get that discount and that will be for as long as you have this membership i will be running this promo throughout this first month in january of 2023 now why would you want to be in this discord group well i provide things like this outlook for 2023 i posted this to them over a week ago as you guys can see here i broke the entire thing down i also share the exact trades that i'm taking in the market as you guys can see here the first day of the new year we entered in Ethereum long trade here at $1,200. We risked 1% 1 on each of these entries here with my exact stop loss and exactly where to take profit and how much profit to take at each point. Fast forward two days later and we hit our first two areas to take profit. You guys can see here, this was the first, this candle right here. That's when we gave the trade signal and this is currently where we are right now. Easy win, guys. I also give you guys my personal time and attention, mentorship. I teach you guys how to trade the right way. And if you guys have been checking out my trading bot videos here where I am testing, I'm creating these scripts to be able to test all these different trading strategies if you guys like any of these trade strategies i will be giving them to you you will have access to them for free in my mentorship group now the last thing i want to tell you guys remember guys keep your crypto safe ftx has gone down blockfi has gone down voyager celsius all these companies that were supposedly very very trustworthy have gone down people have lost their crypto do not keep your crypto in centralized platforms do not let third parties have access to your crypto i did a video on exactly how to do this right here guys you guys can check this video out i'm going to throw it on the screen right now so just go ahead and click that to make sure that in 2023 none of you guys lose your crypto i'll see you guys on the next one as always peace and love